I learned a while back that the art to handling a crocodile is safely is to not handle it at all. In other words, keep it far away. At least that makes common sense to me. I, I, I'm that way when it comes to lots of different kinds of animals. Snakes especially. Snakes just... Ugh. Snakes scare me. I know, I know, I know. They're not slimy. I've petted them. They don't feel awful. But just the thought of them, just... Ugh. Spiders even worse. Those spiders are scary. The scene in Harry Potter in the Chamber of Secrets where the spiders are chasing Harry and Ron, give me the squunchies. Ugh. They terrify me, spiders. Bugs of most kinds. I mean, if they're small and little, I can go like that. You know, all creatures great and small. Whammo. Ooh. Rabid dogs and angry cats are kind of the same. Especially angry cats. Especially a cat who's angry at you that the bowl is empty or the litter tray needs to be changed. Just looking at me should remind you, look at my hair, should remind you that you shouldn't let your mom brush your hair when she's mad at your dad. Stay away from people and from things like that. There are lots of things that you should just keep away from. Avoid like the plague, like COVID-19. Today's passage from Matthew's gospel is one of those things. This is one of those difficult sayings of Jesus that sends preachers into tizzies, not knowing how to handle it or even what part to handle because you could break it down into many different pieces and try to handle it that way. As my dad would have said, it's a target-rich environment. <laughs> so much to touch on, so much to unpack. It could take six hours to do it right, as they would teach you in school, Tiffany. Six hours to explicate this passage and just give it a good going. Don't worry, I'm not going to do that here today. 20 minutes, maybe, tops. All right, let's start at the beginning, because usually that's the best idea. Let's start at the beginning. Jesus, gentle Jesus, meek and mild, says something that just kind of blows us away. It starts hard and gets harder. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. Well, you're the Prince of Peace, Jesus. Of course that's your job. You're, of course you're supposed to bring peace. Don't think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. Huh? What? That's not what we've been hearing. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the Lord of Love. He's the Lord of Life. How could he come to bring not peace, but a sword? For I have come, he says, to set man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Sounds like uh, what it's been like being locked up with family for weeks and weeks and weeks. Kinda. You may love them, and you do, but there are things that they do that just kind of make you want to pull what hair you have left out. Do they have to look at me that way? Do they have to speak that way? They don't even have to say anything. Just the raise of an eyebrow can cause conflict. Much more so, Jesus is saying, when it comes to allegiance to him. When it comes to following him. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. I remember talking with my dad about this one once. I asked him this question, should I love you more than Jesus? And dad's reply was, I love Jesus I love God more than you. And because I love God, because I love Jesus more than you, I love you more than anything else. 
We're called to love Jesus. We're called to serve God. We're called to follow God. We're called to follow Jesus first and foremost. And because we do, we can love others. We can love our parents. We can love our children. Even when they're unlovable, we can then love them because we love God first. Wow. Loving God, loving Jesus frees us to love others. Unlimited, unrestricted, unbound by the world's expectations. Whoever loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. We love Jesus first. We love God first. And because we love God, because we love Jesus first, we are freed to love others, to love family and friends and community supremely in God's love. Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor, even your family member. As yourself, Jesus said. But we can't forget the love of God. We can't ignore the love of Jesus. That must always come first. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Huh? Yeah, I thought Jesus, I thought you carried the cross. I thought you took that cross and took it through the streets of Jerusalem and up Golgotha to the top of the hill where they crucified you for my sins. I thought you did that, Jesus. Yes. And you're to carry your own cross and follow me. And if you don't, you're not worthy of me. I thought you took the wheel, you took it all. I don't have to do nothing but sit here on the couch and eat potato chips. No. Faith is not passive. Faith is active. And without an active response of belief where our belief changes us and changes others, it's dead. Whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me, calls us to action, following Jesus. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. If we set ourselves aside and serve God, if we set ourselves and our own interests aside, our own life aside to serve God by serving others, We will find our life, but if we hold it close, if we refuse to let go and all look to only our own interests, we're not loving God and we're not loving our neighbor. And we will lose ourselves in the process. If following Jesus is going to be this hard, perhaps we shouldn't be doing it. I thought being a Christian was going to be easy. Come to Jesus and all your problems melt away. Good television evangelists say things like that. Come to Jesus and you'll have prosperity forever. Of course, you got to send me some money first, but then you'll have prosperity forever, right? TV evangelists often said that kind of thing. Some still do. Rarely do they ever focus on these difficult passages. These passages that usually we want to focus on other things in the Bible. Why this one, Jesus? It's one of the things I love about the lectionary. The lectionary forces you to go move away from those passages that you like to those passages that you'd rather wish weren't there. This is one of them. I want to preach about grace and love and peace. I want to preach about how God loves us so much that he sent his son to die for us. I want to preach about the love of Jesus Christ and the calling to all. I want to preach about grace and faith. Not this. Not the true measure of devotion that Jesus calls from us. 
which brings meaning and substance to grace and faith and love. For true love requires a sacrifice. We see that in Jesus. Jesus' true love for us, God's true love for us, was expressed in Jesus in his life and his ministry, his teachings and his healings, his feedings of us, and his giving of himself for us by stretching out his arms on the hardwood of the cross and dying for us. True love involves sacrifice. And that's true for our love for God, and our love for neighbor, and our love for family. Thankfully, Jesus doesn't stop here. He continues. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Remember in geometry class, if A equal B and B equal C, then A equal C. Remember that? Transitive. Wow, that's what Jesus just said. If you welcome Jesus, you're welcoming God the Father. Wow. More than that. He keeps going, whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Loving God, loving Jesus Welcoming God, welcoming Jesus is about welcoming others, reaching out with other, to others with love, giving a cup of cold water to others, to even the little ones with love. Loving God, loving Jesus, loving neighbor as self, loving family, all comes down to welcoming. Jesus. Welcome is an old English word. It goes back to the early Anglo-Saxon roots of the English language. And it means to greet with excitement, to greet with happiness and joy a guest into your home. To welcome means to issue a statement of well-being in the arrival of another. To welcome one in means to bring in with excitement and joy, with good feelings and a good heart, the other. And we are called to welcome Jesus. And we welcome Jesus. We welcome God by welcoming others. By welcoming others with a glass of cold water or food if they're hungry, or shelter if they have none, or a word of love and forgiveness if all they have heard is judgment and oppression. That's what it means to welcome Jesus. That's what it means to welcome God. It's to welcome others. We as the family of God throughout the centuries have gone through periods of time where we have not done that which God calls us to do. We've closed our doors to those outside. We've blocked the way to people, for people who are very different from us. We've desired to congregate only with people who look and smell and even taste like us. We desire to block ourselves off from others. Jesus says we can't do that. We're called to welcome others. And when we welcome others, we are welcoming him into our lives afresh. And it is when we love him and serve him and follow him and welcome him that we're serving and following and welcoming God. And we must do that first and foremost before we do anything else before we teach, before we preach, before we pray, before we receive communion or administer baptism, 
before we do anything as the church, we must welcome Christ. And we welcome Christ by welcoming all. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. You know, that's kind of easy. We want the righteous folk, we think, even if we aren't. And whoever gives, and we're not, whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones, he's pointing to children here, in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, None of these will lose their reward. So not just the great and powerful, not just the righteous, not just those who speak for God, but even to the little children, to the least in the world, we're called to welcome. We're called to give a cup of water. And if we do, we will not lose the reward we are promised. The reward of life with Christ. The reward of grace and peace. The reward of eternity with God. Wow. A difficult passage, a difficult set of verses from Matthew's Gospel reminds us that we are called to follow Jesus in all that that means. I went back and looked at the number of times I preached on this passage over the last 20 years since I started keeping a record. I went back and listened to the two times I've preached it in 20 years. Twice? Yep. Now, there's a parallel passage over in Luke I preached a couple of times, but just from Matthew twice in 20 years, I'd avoided it. I tried to avoid it this time. I looked at the Romans passage, but I'd already preached those two those sets of virtues. I already preached that whole concept and idea. It was a continuation of it. And I kept coming back to this. God wouldn't let me stay on the other where I wanted to be. Instead, he kept bringing me down to the necessity of welcoming Jesus and what that means for us. As a people in a society that's undergoing a plague, that causes us to stand back. One of the hardest things I have to do on Sunday morning with the few people that are here is that I cannot hug. I can bless. I can say hi. I can smile with my eyes with the mask over the mouth, but we can't hug. Oh, that hurts. But we can still welcome with words and actions. And when we welcome each other and when we welcome strangers through those doors, we are welcoming Christ anew here. And that's what we have to do. With the violence in the streets, with the fear, and with those who don't grasp the need for care, we are called still to welcome in the name of Christ. And when we welcome, we welcome Christ himself. Take with you today the word that we are called to set God first in our priorities. And setting God first means setting others ahead of of ourselves and setting the love of others in our actions primary in our lives. Let us truly serve. Let us truly welcome. Let us truly be a church in this community that welcomes others regardless of who they are or where they're from. And let us do so in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord.